The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hey, uh, looking good, Billy Ray. Looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. The wheels have fallen off the covered wagon here in Tucson, folks. My computer has died. I have no more Skype, no more data. Zippo, Bupskus. I've got a new one setting here that I've got to get fired up, but it uh, looks like it's finally passed on. So uh, there's a couple of uh, Shane Schmolian is going to be taking over here at the at the first break because he was our regular guest, and he's got some extra things to talk about. But I want to alert you to a couple of things, folks. When you see what happened in Avis yesterday and what's happening with the Russell today, be very, very careful being short any of these markets at these levels. If You can be short all you want as long as you put a stop in, because uh, this could be an area where we go into a blow-off phase like makes 1929 look like nothing. When they can take Avis for 175 up to 570, they, whoever they are, can do anything. So be very, very careful. I had a really great chart to show you on Avis and what was happening there, and I'll be covering that on the live trading day of November the 10th on how to handle these really crazy markets. And I really believe because the Fed's in there today, I, they might do something just really super crazy, and the market might act exactly the opposite of the way you might think it might act. So make sure you put your your stops in here. You know, we made new highs in all of these indices, and that doesn't mean they're going to stop here. They could be in a spectacular blow-off move because we're in a, you know, a parabolic move here, of course, and in this final, whatever this wave is, it's final. That much I'm 100% sure of, but final could last for three or, four, three or four months or three or four years. We don't know that. So those are just a few of the things that I wanted to share with you today. Uh, also, I, they were talking, I was going to show you the relationship between what happened with um, Avis yesterday and Bed Bath & Beyond today. And a lot of this is related to these meme and uh, Robin Hood and all these things, but that's, that's the game we play now, folks. We've seen this before. Also, I wanted to bring to your attention the fact that that, that ZS uh, pattern that uh, we had looked at at 320, that got all the way up to 329 today. So, you know, that one also had failed. So we're in an area, I don't even know where Tesla is. Tesla could go anywhere because once it clears 1250, you know, you, there's, there's, no, there's no, nothing up there but blue sky. So just be very, very careful in here. We've been very bearish, the gold market here. I missed the sale in that yesterday by a hair, and it's down about 20-some dollars today. I'm feeling I'm not too happy about that. But uh, that's, that's, neither, that's neither here nor there. I, I'm going from my memory of the charts that I prepared for today. If you remember, we looked at the one on wheat yesterday. It's broken about 23 cents from the high uh, that we had looked at. Uh, we thank David uh, White for posting that on his uh, wheat uh, uh, pattern that he uses for with Tom O'Brien. That was uh, pretty much spot on. Uh, and also, I wanted to mention the fact that silver is getting very, very close. To, it's already broken the uh, the uh, 20. It's almost ready. To, I don't know. I can't tell because I don't have any data. The last I saw, it was getting ready to break the uh, the uh, 22 level. Uh, I believe 21. No, 22. I can't. See, I, I don't have the chart. All I know, it's very close. Silver's within about 15 cents of that low that we were looking at here uh, on Monday. So we're getting down here with the Fed in there today. Uh, of course, uh, anything uh, is possible, and uh, we'll we'll see what it's going to be like. Um, trying a few of these from memory. The euro still looks your your. <laughs> what a day! The euro still looks lower to me, and I, that means that dollar index has got a really good shot of getting 95 today. We're at 94. Plus 94.20, I think something like that. The last I saw, and with the Fed there today uh, at 215, we could easily, easily hit that. So that's the main thing. If I can't get this computer fixed, I will be taking a couple days off to get it working because working blind like this 
is not very much fun because it was just about 25, well, it was about a half hour ago that I realized that uh, I had no Skype, and then as soon as I logged on to get the Skype, Skype shut down on me, and then I lost all data, and now I, I couldn't even log on to my computer. So I assume that it has passed on. But still, it's got the beautiful pictures of the grandkids on here, but other than that, there's not too much uh, to go on. So we'll remind our, our, ourselves of these things as we uh, be thankful for what we do have. We will have Shane on, and he's, I spoke to him yesterday about this. He's got some really great stuff, as he always does. So he'll be taking over at the 11-17 uh, break, and we'll be going from, uh, going from that level. Uh, like I mentioned before, no data. So I'm not, able, I'm not able, and you can't even, well, you can't call in because I don't have any questions to answer. But uh, all I can tell you is, folks, when you see things like what happened in with some of these others, we have saw it in the DWAC, but that's one of those crazy ones. But when you have a major stock like Avis that can go from 175 to 575 in a matter of two hours, I mean, that tells you there's illiquidity in the market, folks. And, boy, that's one thing we don't want in these markets is illiquidity because this is what we base everything on. And I can, I can see where they extend to. I mean, I, can, I had some beautiful charts showing you the high at 575 uh, in the Avis, and I was relating that to the, you know, Bed Bath and Beyond. But Bed Bath and Beyond is still in a totally different realm than what was happening with Avis. But, uh, but these are characteristics of patterns that we see all the time. And I, I really had some real great charts on it. I still have the charts, but they're in this computer, so I'll have to reconstruct them, and we'll hopefully have them. If I'm not here tomorrow, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll have them hopefully by. Uh, uh, the beginning of the week, and we'll we'll have those. Uh, we're, we're we're scheduled to have Stan Harley tomorrow as our guest, and if I can't uh, get Stan today uh, or tomorrow, I'll have him set up for for next week. All I want to do is to uh, alert you to the fact that these markets are extremely volatile, and you just want to be careful. You you really do because uh, there's a lot of uh, illiquidity when you see that stuff that's happening. With, uh, with that, that's short covering. I know whatever you want to call it, but that, that is not good action, folks. That is not how the stock market is supposed to work. This is a, this is a, when you see stuff like this, this is not the beginning. Uh, it could be, it, this could last a while, but this is the end. This is how it's going to end. And, uh, but just be really careful out here because it's, uh, it's crazier than uh, you might even think. And I've seen just about everything in my lifetime, but I've been through these before. And uh, in that dot com bubble, but uh, this is uh, this is very very illiquidity is not good, folks. You want to see markets go up and down normally, like you usually do. Okay, so that's the main thing that you want to uh, to focus on uh, regarding the uh, the gold uh, chart that we were looking at. Uh, I, I saw a beautiful short up there yesterday, and most of you did because they asked me why didn't I go short at the seven ninety six. That's where we took profits from our long and booked in a nice $2,200, and I, being as cautious as I am with the Fed in here, I said, well, I better wait a day before I, I try to sell it. And then last night when I saw it, it had already broken quite a bit. Well, there we go. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have the wolf trader himself, Shane Smolian, on the line. Shane, are you there? Well, I hope he takes over because I have no idea where I stand here, boys and girls. So uh, we'll see if, it, uh, if Shane is there. If not, uh, I don't know what to do because I can't even connect with uh, anybody else. So I am. Go ahead, Hello? Al. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're ahead. You, go ahead. I'm having some computer problems, so thanks for setting in, and I know you've got some great information, so why don't you uh, let the folks know what you're looking at today? <laughs> Boy. Oh, man. Can you hear me, Larry? Yes, sir. I can hear you, but okay. that's all I can. I, you go ahead and take over the show if you don't okay, mind. Okay, let's go. I'm ready. You go ahead. Take off. Okay. All right. So uh, first of all, if I'm acting a little distracted here, guys, we have three uh, big positions on right now. We're short gold, short oil, short the S&P, and oil's approaching our target. We have it down around $78. Uh, our target on oil is about seventy eight fifty five. So if I'm a little distracted here, uh, you'll have to excuse me on that. But uh, we're having some success. We shorted that oil up at $83.65 yesterday. So that's heading lower. But I want to talk to you today about the S&P uh, 500 here uh, because we've had some really radical conditions over the last month. And so I want to put this in perspective. Uh, I get a lot of questions. I do the webinars every Saturday. And I do want to just let people know where I stand on this, what my position is on this, because this is the big market uh, that's been heading straight up for the last month. So S&P 500, let me just give you my background here. Uh, we have our own perspective uh, based upon what the Fed is doing. So I, I do other forecasting tools. We have different cycles. We have different transits. We have different things that we do. But the core of what we do is based upon what the Fed does. Okay, so this is what I watch. Uh, the Fed is the engine for all rallies since September, since 2009, essentially, uh, both short term and long term. So there is solid evidence of day to day <clears throat> influences, uh, even day to day on this. Um, but most of the time, it's been across daily and weekly time frames. But what we saw in, in this uh, October rally uh, is what we saw essentially daily interventions, uh, where there was no, there was just, it was relentless in terms of the intervention to keep this market going higher. So 
I follow Fed data and evidence. I'm not giving you a theory. I'm not telling you what I think it could do. I'm just following what happened. Uh, and I track this to the S&P. Uh, the S&P is trading in lockstep with the Fed. Uh, so the long-term internals, which we look at the, that's what I care about for the long-term. This is falling since July. And I'm gonna show you some charts to, to give you the background on this, but it's so important to understand this because this is what drives the S&P 500 since 2009. So getting to our next slide here, the sell-off in September, I think it caught the Fed off guard. This is when all of these controversies started uh, with the insider trading at the top of the market. Uh, and a lot of the Fed officials started selling at that point. I, I think that's a coincidence, but it did catch them off guard. And so what happens is this market fall, starts falling straight down. It gets down to the 4,300. And then the Fed began two record surges off the lows. I'm going to show you on the chart because Again, everything that I'm talking to you about is evidence-based, it's data-based. It's not what I think is going to happen. I'm just tracking what's happening and correlating it to the S&P. So on the short term, the Fed has been strong since early October. But I believe that this is, this is peaking and it may be at the upper end of a channel. I'm going to show you this channel on the chart so you can see this. I think the Fed ran this up into the taper. Uh, I don't think there's any positive way to spin this today. I think the taper is coming. Uh, inflation's at 30-year highs. I, I think they have to do it. And I, I think that essentially they wanted to give as much cushion as they could. Uh, so I think the Fed is counting on these these positive um, holiday seasonals. And, um, you know, most people know that when the markets get into November, December, it's generally positive. Uh, but I will say that previous seasonals have failed in 2018 when we had the taper it didn't matter what the seasonals were. It didn't matter what the, the transits were. If the Fed pulls back, it's the end of the line for the S&P. Uh, the Fed internals will likely decline with this taper. So that's the big thing I want everybody to understand is the internals that I track, they have to fall with the taper. When they start cutting the bond purchases, the internals will start to fall. And when that occurs, I believe the S&P will start to come back. So I know it's been confusing. I know. You know, you look at the rally, I look at the rally, Larry looks at the rally, everyone knows this looks very strange, and there's a reason for it. I'm gonna show you this. So this is the next slide here. I just wanna summarize this. This is a key kind of doctrine or dogma that I follow here, which is that the Fed juice is the S&P engine, okay? When there's no Fed, there's no rally. There's no exceptions to this. Uh, eventually, the markets will catch up to what the Fed is doing. Since 2009, there has not been one time since the S&P has successfully rallied without the Fed helping out in some way. So we're coming out of a period of quantitative easing now, and the taper is going to begin. So I believe this will have a negative effect on the S&P. Now, maybe it doesn't show up today. Maybe they say, oh, we're going to delay it or whatever they're going to say to try to get this positive spin today. But a taper is a taper. Uh, so th this is significant. I think it's a, it's a historic day. It's an important day, and we need to watch this. The next thing to talk about here is the fact that um, when, we, when you're talking about forecasting tools, I don't care what it is, cycles, transits, Elliott wave, Gartley patterns, GAN patterns, divergences, sentiment. Okay, that's fine. We're all here coming on the show talking about different forecasting tools, and that's, that's great. And, so, and some, sometimes some work better than others. But what I want to emphasize is all of these work around the context of the Fed juice. So we can be looking at a surging cycle for coming out for 50 days or so. But if the Fed pulls back, the market's going to go down. Uh, and this is based upon my work and the evidence that I do. Uh, so I, I want everybody to understand that, that we are talking about the context of every forecasting tool you can imagine around what's going on with the Fed. OK, so this is important because this is, this is what drives it. This is the driving engine of the S&P 500. So let's talk about the recent rally. The recent rally off the lows showed a short-term record Fed strength, and I'm gonna show you this on the chart. This happened twice. There was that banking holiday, the market shut down, and the market started to fall again. There was no Fed juice, and then they come back with a record day, intraday, to push it back up. Now, of course, they lit all these orders up. There were short covering, gamma squeeze, corporate buybacks, all this stuff was happening. But the point is, this was facilitated by the Fed. This was done on purpose to push this off the lows. Um, this is juxtaposed against long-term weakness. So this is where it gets confusing because long-term, we are still headed lower on the Fed internals. Short-term, 
They spiked it in October uh, like we've never seen before. And I'm going to show you there was th there's a three record spikes that occurred within the last few months. So where does this leave us now? Well, the Fed, the Fed taper will lead to a decrease in the Fed internals. So this is important because there's no way around this. If they start pulling back on the bond purchases, the internals will decrease. Uh, they can try to delay things and you know, put positive speech in and spin and all of this stuff today, that's fine. But the reality is a taper is a taper uh, and, and the inflation is a problem. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, everybody, welcome back to Larry Pesavento's Trade What You See. I'm Shane Smullyan. I'm filling in today for Larry while he's working on some technical issues with the computer. So we were talking about the S&P 500. What I want to do is show you the Fed internals. So this is the key, the core, everything that's going on with this S&P. So I'm going to show you this chart here. This is really, really important. Uh, so first of all, these are the long-term Fed internals. Now, they've made a channel here. So the Fed essentially starts their real taper back here in April. So I'm going to show you this here on the chart. So if you see this letter A here on the chart, uh, this is where the Fed begins the uh, the taper. 
Okay, so this this is where they started, but really I think the bear market starts here in the in July. So here is July here, and so I'm measuring the bear market based upon what the Fed is doing now. I know, I know, everybody says, "What are you talking about? The S and P's at a new high." Blah blah blah. Look, this is what drives the market. I focus on what the Fed does, and that is the most important thing. So back, right here in July, you see when this for, dives down into here. This is when the bear market starts. Uh, the market did go up for a little bit longer here, but you can see it starts to fall down here. So at the letter A is when they first start. Here B is the next peak. And then the letter C here is when the bear market starts right here. This is in July uh, based upon what the Fed is doing. Now, again, I know the market pushed up to highs, but I think this is not this is temporary. I, this is what I'm thinking based upon what the Fed is doing. I'm giving you my best estimate here, but I really believe in this. This is what I, st I study this. I've been studying this going back since 2009. Now these Fed internals are making a channel. You can see this channel here by this, this dashed blue line here, and they're staying in this channel. You can see that they came up and made one peak here, and then the Fed starts this big pullback here down to the letter D here, and it took a while, but the, the market did catch up here into the letter E. So the Fed starts to see this there. I think it caught them off guard, uh, and so we get this one bounce down here, and then this comes back down here again. Now, in the letter E here, this is when they really start the record surge here. So this is the record surge pushing up here. Okay. And then we, so they had three times where they rejected this off the lows. This is the 4,300 level here. Uh, S&P comes up. Banks shut down for the banking holiday. No Fed juice. Market comes back. Then they come back. And so this is the letter G here. It's the banking holiday. Then they push it up again. This is the record high here. I know you can't see it here, but it was on an intraday basis. Uh, and then they kept this high. Now notice, this is starting to roll over now. I believe that they hit the top of the channel again. I think the longer term trend is lower, and I think this was a short term surge to push this back up. Uh, I know it looks crazy, and everybody knows it looks crazy. Nothing about this rally looks normal because it was, there was many factors that went into this, but the Fed was there facilitating. Now, let me go into the next chart here. I'm gonna show you a chart here this is dealing with the the speed of the response of the fed so this is how i'm measuring so again i told you everything that i do is based upon evidence i'm going to show you the speed of the fed okay so back here in march when we got our first decline back here this is the letter a here on the chart this this was the first response of the fed uh in march to push this back up now at the time this was the fastest response i've ever seen from the fed Okay, but that's gonna change as we go along the line here. So this goes back up. They pushed the market up here. So the internals are still rising. Okay, we have this short-term peak here. Now, this is when the, I believe, again, the bear market starts here in July. They start pulling back here. Now notice it took a while, but the market starts to come back here. You see this, we talked about this. This was the first move down, and then they start to get a little concerned. So the letter C here, this is the first push. Now, at the time, this became the strongest response in Fed history. You can see the steepness of the arrow here. If you go over here, where I say response comparison here on this letter E, I drew the vectors. These are vectors in terms of the magnitude and the speed. It's how fast did it go? What's the slope? So you can see the yellow arrow here. It matches the yellow arrow over here. That's the first one. Then the green one, you can see this one gets even steeper. This is the next response. This is the response that came in in early October. Then the then the market, the, the banks are shut down. There's no Fed juice. The market starts to fall. Then the banks reopen, and they start with this record-setting uh, response. This is the one that we saw here, and it caused, it was so intense that we saw a gap up on the intraday chart. I've very rarely seen that on the S&P, and that was on like a 30-minute time frame. There was gaps on an intraday chart because it was so intense. All of these orders were being triggered into here. Gamma squeeze, short squeeze, corp, all this stuff was going on. But the point is, this would never have happened without the Fed. And this is what I want to emphasize to people. I know everyone's focused on earnings and all of this. It doesn't matter. This market cannot do anything without the Fed. And the Fed has to start tapering now. And when the Fed starts to taper, the S&P is not going to be able to go up without the Fed. Now, is there a point in the future where, where we'll be able to go up without the Fed? Yes, of course, at some point it will. But I have never seen that happen in all of the years I've been studying this since 2009. And I want everybody to understand that if I saw the S&P going without the Fed, I would say, well, maybe there's some strength there. But all of this was coordinated, all of this, 100% coordinated. So I want to, I'm just warning everybody that if they do pull back here, if they do taper and they do follow through with this, uh, S&P is going to come back. Uh, it has not, and it doesn't matter what the earnings are. It doesn't matter. 
What matters is what the Fed is doing, the liquidity cycle that's coming into this market. And so, the, and, and so we are living in crazy times, but I want everybody to understand what is going on because this is the reality of the situation. We can talk about cycles, we can talk about Bradley's, we can talk about whatever. The point is, if the Fed pulls back, the market will go down. That's the end. If these internals start to come, start coming down again, the market will follow lower. Okay, the market will follow lower. So I just want everybody to understand that. So this is what I watch, and so I want to give you my perspective because we talk about uh, the, we talk about the market based upon what what is the Fed doing, and so this is why I have the perspective that I have here. So uh, just keep just to keep in mind now, this is the chart here. Uh, of the S&P with our symbols here. So um, the, the optimized Bradley here on 1023 goes into this sell pattern here. So this is this is a very dependable indicator. I talked about the profit graph on this uh, back in, in the webinar last Saturday. I'm gonna show you how that optimized Bradley does. It does pretty well. Uh, it doesn't do as well as the actual double optimized lunar cycle, but it does pretty well. So that pink arrow right there is gonna be this chart right here this is the optimized bradley here it's up about 156 points since we started running this back in in may that's in a cell okay so i consider that to be a pretty good indicator in of itself it's not as good as the double lunar cycle uh but that's been in this cell and that's pointing down for a good part of the month here so um if we put the context of the fed with the optimized bradley and the fed does pull back you have some potential now for this market to turn uh, the next thing I want to look at here is the double lunar cycle here. Uh, this is uh, on 11.3 here. This is actually going into a sell today at the close. Now, this is my gold standard astro indicator. I, I'm starting to put these up more and more each week now. I have about eight months of data on this. This is a, a special uh, lunar cycle that is optimized actually three different times. It's using technology to, to look forward into the future. It's not just looking at the past. And so this has been this picks this picks up this recent jog up too. So from the 1026, this picks this jog up here to the 103. But that's going into a sell today. Then on 11.5, the planetary speed index is going into a sell also. So you have a lot of planetary forces here or cycles that are pushing down, and the Fed internals, as I showed you, are down too. So I would put I would caution everybody about this market. This rally is not real. Uh, it's not real on its own. It was completely facilitated by what the Fed is doing. So I'll get back to this uh, when we come back from the break. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Can everybody hear me now? Let me know if you can hear me. Sorry about that. The mic, the mic got muted somehow. Okay, so I think we're good with the audio. So um, I was just talking about this as an intraday chart here of the Fed in terms of what's going on. And um, th this was when the Fed came in and stopped the selling on the decline. So uh, this, is, this is right here. This is the letter A. This is when it comes to that 4300 level twice. And then uh, it comes up. Now, this is letter B here is when the banks are closed. There's no Fed juice. The market immediately starts to fall. Uh, then, um, uh, then the we reach this low here, and the Fed opens up near all-time record. This is this is when they really push this up. This is when you had that intraday gap up, and then they had a series of very strong days here by the Fed, where they wanted to keep this up. Uh, and so the market is responding to this almost to the day. On the letter E here, you can see. This is the big pullback here. Not a big, this is a smaller pullback, but the market starts to, to, to respond immediately. Then they push it up. They pushed it up hard that day of the tech earnings too. Uh, and now they're starting to, to see a pullback here. So uh, look, on this intraday chart, uh, you have one of the longest negative divergences I've ever seen. Uh, you can see this, you know, the, the market's going up here and then the, the stochastics are falling here. The RSI is falling here. You also have a double one here. Uh, so ma no matter how you look at this, um, it's, it's, it's got a bearish setup here on this. There's no doubt about it. And again, I look at what the Fed does, and that's what I care about. So that's what I focus on. So fear and greed index. This is just kind of a curious thing to look at. Uh, the current reading is actually 79. Uh, this is the highest that it's been all year. Uh, previous high was in the 30 to 50 range. Even when the market was rallying, the fear and greed index did not want to budge. So this was a missing component here psychologically for a high. Again, the market can turn without this if the Fed comes down, uh, but essentially, um, the the uh, you know the crowd was drawn in this time. Sorry, guys, I'm hearing that I have a caller, but I can't hear anything, so I'm just going to keep talking here uh, and displaying the charts here. So, uh, fear and greed index hit 679. Uh, this is significant. This is the highest reading of the year, which means that the public has been drawn into this recent rally, unfortunately, uh, and so. 
I think this is a dangerous time on the S&P. That's my opinion, but it's based upon what I study with the Fed. I can't find one example to the contrary of what I'm telling you. I went back and studied every single market since 2009. You can see here on the chart, we are here. We are approaching the, the peak here on this. So um, this, is, uh, this is the peak here, circling this so you can see it. So look at where we are. Uh, this is a curious thing to look at. It's not as not as dominant as the Fed, of course, but I think that's interesting because that's what you want to see at market highs. Um, relative strength, uh, we, st we see laggards here. So, for example, I look at the banking sector versus the S&P. JP Morgan is weak relative to the S&P 500. That's not a good sign. Uh, we would want to see banks getting strong here. The banks are relatively weak to the S&P, so that, it, that is not good. Uh, uh, you know, typically... I want to see a strong banking sector. The other one, too, uh, that's a relative strength, which we'll get to in a minute, is the tech. But you can see here on the chart, this is the S&P 500 here. This is JP Morgan here. And this is the relative strength indicator down here. Now, this is getting weaker. Uh, I would like to see the banks getting stronger if we're going to get some type of a rally. But uh, that's just what it is. It's not looking so hot. Uh, Apple, again, these are, these are kind of curious things. These are just divergences, but you can see here that the technology is running weak relative to the S&P. This is the S&P here. This is Apple here. This is the relative strength, and it's getting weaker as we go here across time. Now, typically when this happens, uh, when, when, when Apple starts to get weak or technology, the market usually starts to follow down lower, and that's occurring now. So, I mean, I know Tesla's going crazy and all of this stuff with, you know, with that, but Apple, if you look at a lot of the tech stocks, some of them are strong, Microsoft strong, but most of them um, are not pushing the way they should if we're coming into some type of a bull market. So I had some questions. I saw somebody asked about gold. So let me talk to you about a few other uh, markets that I'm looking at here uh, that I think could be ready to turn lower too. Well, the U.S. dollar, no, the U.S. dollar still, I think, could have some strength into, it's, it's coming up to a seasonal high still. Uh, and, and, and the taper could strengthen the dollar. You do have the spending package, which, which could weaken the dollar. But, okay, the dollar, I think the taper is significant for the dollar. Uh, gold is coming into negative seasonals. Somebody asked me about that. Uh, seasonals don't tell the whole story, but it is coming into negative seasonals. We are short oil and gold right now and S&P yesterday. Uh, oil, I think, is likely to follow the S&P. I've been watching oil. We added oil to the fast fed big runs. This is our new uh, trading system. So the big runs looks at swing trades from three to eight days. And um, I think I've been watching this intraday really closely because we've had a, a lot of good trades here with oil. It follows the S&P almost lockstep on an intraday basis. So I, the problem is that, you know, I think everybody would like the S&P to be higher and gold and uh, sorry, and oil to be lower. But the problem is they're running together. So if you're going to kill inflation, you got to they're, they're probably both going to come down together. That's the that's the, the crazy thing about this is that. If you try to reduce the inflation, the S&P probably comes down. So it's kind of a balancing act that the Fed has to do. And they're doing their best to try to uh, balance out the situation and bring liquidity to this. I'm just trying to point out to you guys what is going on. Oil is still in negative seasonals. Uh, I believe there's a good chance it could be turning here. Again, we, we had that short trade like yesterday, 83.65, but that's a shorter term trade. The Fed juice is turning. Corn is coming into negative seasonals and bond is finishing up negative seasonals. So... That's the summary there, and if we have time, I'll get through these charts. Uh, and if we don't finish this now, I can go through this on a webinar on, on Saturday if you guys want to go through this if you're interested. Okay, so here's the dollar chart. Uh, the dollar is still pushing into uh, positive seasonals here. So this is the seasonal pattern coming up here. And um, the problem is with this Fed is that you don't, you don't really know sometimes what's going to happen on the short term. But I think long term, there, there is still some room here uh, for the dollar to, to head higher. Um, gold here, uh, the gold, the, this, this has been following the seasonal pattern pretty well. Uh, it's still coming into a, it's still coming into a, uh, a seasonal low here. So, um, I, I'm just going to move this over so you can see it, but you can see that it's still heading lower and I'm, I'm covering this up to try to be fair to the subscribers cause I don't want to give all the information away, but gold is still coming into negative seasonals here. So, um, you know, we have to be careful about that. I mean, cause these are sensitive symbols to the dollar. So a strengthening dollar can weaken gold, it can weaken oil, all of these different components here. So that's, that's gold on that chart. So we'll have more when we come back.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. All right, welcome back to the show. I'm Shane Smolian filling in for Larry Pesavento on Trade What You See. And we were talking about some different markets. I was talking about just other markets, people had questions. And gold is coming into negative seasonals. I think oil could be turning here. If the S&P goes down, I think there's a good chance oil will come down, although oil has been a really stubborn bull. Uh, uh, corn, corn's coming into negative seasonals. I have here on the chart here, this is a, a seasonal chart here. Uh, you can see that, that corn is, is, is looping back down here. Uh, the bond has been responding beautifully here to our Fed juice. Uh, that is in a negative seasonal. You can see the bond has basically been following uh, these patterns too. So I think, I think the bond might be coming back to reality here uh, because when they start pulling back on the bond purchases, you might start to see rising yields. I mean, it's just logical that that would follow. Uh, so the Fed's in a tough spot, man. They're trying to, they're trying to help everybody out in every way, and there's only so much uh, that they can really do. Uh, I do want to point out that uh, for those of you trying to call in, I can't hear the calls, guys. So uh, either you can either uh, send me a, a, t a chat on the website or this weekend at 1, I have a, a webinar. You can come on and chat with me there and ask questions. Uh, we, we do track these double lunar cycles that I talk about, and we track them in multiple markets. I uh, just want to kind of cover this because we have, we have eight months of data now. This is what was actually tracked. These are just some profit curves here. This is Bitcoin. Uh, this comes with the, the, the newsletter. You can see that this this has been profitable. The U.S. dollar has been uh, tracking profitable too, and then of course the the ten year note, the ten year bond has been tracking profitable too. So when you when you see those arrows on the chart, they do correspond to actual uh, trading systems that we do track here. Uh, and I'm going to have more each week tracked and updated. It's just we cover over 30 markets, so sometimes it gets tough to keep up with all that. But I am in the process of doing that. 
And when you look on these charts, these green arrows here, these are the double lunar cycles. So those profit graphs that you just saw, that's what these green arrows are here. And so right now, uh, it does look like the bond could be into some trouble here because the double lunar is coming into a sell here on 11.5 and the Fed use is, is going down. So uh, this is a historic day uh, for the Fed. I think we, we have to give them a lot of credit for trying to, to help these markets out. And uh, we'll just see where we go from here. But if you have any questions, uh, please contact me, Shane at WolfTradeFutures.com. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you for everything. Have a great day.